Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm glad that you could be with us for worship this morning. I want to say a special welcome to all who are joining us by Facebook. Please do note the insert with all of the activities uh, between here and Christmas morning. A great many opportunities for you to take part and to uh, enjoy the the season. Please note especially the cantata this afternoon at 4 p.m., Uh, I was there last night, and they did wonderfully. I am sure that today will be equally wonderful. Uh, And now Paul has a brief announcement about the Living Nativity. Good morning, my church family. I want to draw your attention to a wonderful opportunity um, for, I believe it's over 50 years, if not more. Uh, Centenary has done the Living Nativity, which you may have walked through in order to get into church this morning. Uh, But on December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, you can be a part of that. Uh, My wife, which is why I think you really help me, is in charge of getting the people together. So if you would like to be a Mary or Joseph, uh, Wiseman, Shepherd, or Angels, it truly is a wonderful opportunity to stand and be a part of the Living Nativity and to see people's faces as they observe from the street uh, the reminder of the beautiful story. So... um, Please pray about that, and would love to have you be a part of that wonderful opportunity. Thank you. I do want to say a special word for all men who refuse to shave at this time of the year. This is a wonderful excuse uh, and an opportunity for you to to share that beard with everyone. Um, The costumes are cleaned every night. Uh, and only worn one time. So, you know, we do the very best that we can to provide a a safe environment for everyone. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Would you please stand as able and join me in sharing our greeting responsibly? My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of the servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and the holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. And he has filled up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And to send the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors. Our hymn is O Come, All Ye Faithful, number 234. We're going to do verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. Remind us that, like Mary, 
Each one of us is a bearer of your good news. We are called to proclaim hope, peace, joy, and love in your name. Open our hearts and our spirits today to receive with great joy the love that you have for us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Emmanuel means God with us. In the child of Bethlehem, God is indeed with us for all time. We light these candles as a reminder that God with us brings us love.
The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Robert Fulgham tells the story of a rather hot day in August when he and his wife were trying to establish a little bit of order in the mess that was uh, their home. It seems uh, that the preceding Christmas, uh, as the cards began to arrive, he He had set them into a a box uh, waiting for a time uh, when there would be more leisure to read through all of the messages. As tends to happen, no such moment arrived and the box was quickly packed up with all of the rest of the things and the uh, let's just pack it up, we'll deal with it another time moment that happens at the end of the Christmas season. So on that rather hot day in August, he had taken down the box and uh, sat out on the porch and began to read through some of the messages. So picture in your mind for a brief moment uh, this idea of a man in shorts uh, sitting out in the sun in 90 degree weather, uh, iced tea next to him and some Christmas carols playing on the on the radio just to set the mood as he began to read through all of the messages. It was all there. The snow, the, uh, the images of angels and the holy family. Just about then, uh, Fulgham's neighbor looked over to see what might be the excitement and uh, Fulgham explained that he was reading through Christmas cards. She laughed and then he handed her one of the cards And she cried. The two of them sat there reading through the cards, passing them back and forth and beginning to cry. Now the absurdity of Christmas in August notwithstanding, it it seems to me that altogether too often we get so wrapped up in the energy of this season that we fail to take time to really sit and absorb the truth of what this season means. At its very best, that is what Advent is supposed to be. A time for us to draw back from all of the activity, all of the craziness, and to just sit with this amazing declaration that God is with us. Over these weeks, we've talked about the idea that God with us brings hope, brings peace, brings joy. And this morning, God with us brings love. As we near the end of this Advent journey, we read again this odd little tale of Mary coming to visit her Cousin Elizabeth. Now in the interest of historical accuracy, allow me to share with you that cousin was kind of a generic term in the ancient Near East. 
It meant simply a relative, someone close. I share that with you, not that it really changes where I'm going with the sermon, but mostly so that you know that your pastor did, in point of fact, go to school. (laughs) The truth of the matter is that mostly what Elizabeth was was a safe place for Mary to land, a safe place for her to go, because Mary was scared. Mary wasn't sure what it would mean. And the thing of it is, Elizabeth was too. Think about it for a moment. Here is this middle-aged woman, suddenly pregnant, facing all the uncertainty that that meant. Now, I imagine that Elizabeth and Zachariah received a certain amount of deference in their community. After all, uh, Zachariah was a priest and People tend to respect the priest. But you know fine, upstanding religious folks. You can imagine the whispers that went behind Elizabeth's back. Here, through all of the years, no children. Barren, as the old translations had it. You can only imagine the sideways glances that she had received through the years. The whispers that she heard behind her. And the thing of it is, suddenly being pregnant as a middle-aged woman probably didn't improve things. You know how folks whisper. I'm so glad that Elizabeth is finally pregnant. Bless her heart. I'm so glad that Elizabeth is pregnant. I wonder if the baby will look like Zachariah as if just to hint that maybe it wouldn't. Truth of the matter is, people can be cruel. And with all the love in my heart, allow me to remind you, no one is quite as cruel as fine, upstanding religious folks. Elizabeth was scared. Through all of the years, she had lived with this singular story of her being broken, not quite valuable. Because you see, uh, children was the measure of life. And a woman that has no children, I'm tempted to say was, but I think the truth of the matter is that the verb should be is, tends to feel empty, tends to feel unable to be. It is that emptiness that I think stands in contrast to the word that we hear in Scripture today. Luke records for us that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she says to to Mary, why has this happened that the mother of my Lord would come to me. It seems to me that the place for us to turn in our reflection is in the the, the awareness that God with us comes at our point of weakness, our point of emptiness, our point of brokenness. You know, over the years, I've had a number of folks come and sit in my office and talk to me about their lives. And sometimes they feel broken. They feel empty. I've heard folks tell me about uh, marriages that just aren't working. I've heard folks talk about the pain of Raising children that seem to be turning in the wrong direction. I've heard folks talk about the pain of, uh, of jobs that just take life away. And I want to share with you today that the wonder of the Christian gospel is that God is 
with us. Even in those points of darkness, of emptiness, of pain. Benjamin Zander is the conductor of an orchestra in Boston. He teaches at the Conservatory of Music there in Boston. The very best musicians in the world. Here are students that are on their way to uh, a full career playing instruments uh, all around the world. They have all of the talent, all of the skill necessary, the technical ability, but frequently they can't quite get away from themselves. They're tied up by all of the expectations unable to really enter into the flow of the moment. Xander decided that what he would do is that at the beginning of every semester, he would stand before the students and he would say to them, every student in this room receives an A for this class. You have only one job. Write to yourself a letter. What will you do with that A? My brothers and sisters, in the child of Bethlehem, humanity has received an A. God is here. God is with us. What will you do with it? Where will you go with that truth? Amen. Amen. Our hymn is number 242. I invite you to stand and sing together. Love came down at Christmas. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church whose holy and apostolic faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we come 
Oh, okay. I get a little worried when we get to the hymn sing and you leave the piano. <laughs> uh, we come to our, our hymn sing time. Uh, we will sing two verses of three hymns. Two ten. Which verse? One and four, you said? One and two. One and two. Another one? How about number uh, 221, uh, verses 1 and 4? All right, Colby, this is your chance to come up with one to stump the pianist. <laughs> 718. All right. Wait, I'm, I don't even have... There it is. Verses 1 and 4.
Well, I don't know if you stumped the pastor, the pianist, but you stumped the pastor. (laughs) And now as forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves to God and our gifts for the ministry of Jesus Christ.
we move into a time of sharing our praises, our joys and concerns, allow me to share just a couple this morning. Uh, Ron asks for prayers for his uh, the family. Uh, they lost his cousin uh, in Germany this week, Helga Everson. Uh, also prayers for Eloise Collins, who had a fall the other day, and for uh, Gary uh, Barker, who is uh, in the hospital. Do we have other concerns or other joys to share this morning? How's Steve Ross? Is he doing okay? Steve is doing better. Steve has been on the mend since, uh, since last week. Thanks for asking. We're certainly with some, some concern last Sunday. Uh, Michael, if I could share, uh, David Holbert, who is the uh, critical repair supervisor for Habitat for Humanity, was in a very serious uh, motorcycle accident last week and uh, uh, is in stable condition, but uh, will be out of work for quite a while. Um, he has five and soon to be six children at home, oh, and certainly want to be praying for that family. Michael, we um, celebrate that George Garris, who uh, signed the 830 choir for many years, is home and doing very well. Do we have a, uh, any uh, prayer concerns to just hold on our own this morning? Oh, I'm sorry. My daughter, Abby, is so much better. Oh. They live in Western <coughs> Mass, and it's pretty cold there already. So they're going on a Christmas cruise to hot country. <laughs> so they can follow up. Prayers for their travels. Do we have any unspoken concerns? Let's go to the Lord. Lord, as we sit here this morning, we can't quite imagine what it must have been like for Mary to hear God's request and to respond unconditionally with yes. For we have this tendency to put conditions on things. We want to know what we have to do, how long it's going to take, what's in it for us, what are the outcomes. Forgive us for these times of our faithlessness. Slow us down. It causes us to take time to really consider all of the wonderful ways that you have always worked in our lives. And let us, yes, sit with that amazing revelation that you are God with us. As we come before you this morning with our concerns, concerns on our hearts for our families, our friends, for the troubled places in our world, remind us that your presence is with us. And that your healing love comforts and restores all. <clears throat> Open our hearts and our ears to the cries of those in need. Let us use our talents and resources to help others. Give us courage. Give us energy and enthusiasm, Lord, as we go about working for you in this world. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us the sign of the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our closing hymn is on page 238, Angels <coughs> We Have Heard on High.
May you live in the light of love. May love call forth the song you sing. May love fill your celebrations with joy. And may love guide you home again. Amen.